Hi there, my name is Father Gregory Merkley and welcome to our program of preparation for consecration to St. Joseph. Today I'm going to share with you a little bit more about the consecration to St. Joseph, especially going over those key ideas from days 21 to 27. And so as mentioned in the previous videos, Father Don Calloway, the author of the book that we are using, he uh, himself has an incredible story. And so uh, just get to know the author of this great book. I'm going to leave some, some links in the uh, description below on this YouTube video. So let's get into our summary of how far we've gotten, beginning with day 21. Day 21, St. Joseph, most faithful, pray for us. Faithfulness is a difficult virtue for us, but St. Joseph was always faithful to God in everything and faithful to Mary, his beloved spouse. He was faithful, faithful to protecting our Lord Jesus. He was also a man of faith who loved and trusted in God for everything. And his faith was zealous, it was firm, it was deep. He was faithful in easy times and hard times. It is hard for us sometimes to be faithful because of the opposition of the world. Sometimes it's hard, but we're called to be faithful to the Lord no matter what. St. Joseph was able to also adore Jesus wherever he was, even when he was with Mary and Jesus, because Mary was also a living tabernacle. And um, so St. Joseph was blessed to be with Jesus in his daily life. We can think of how St. Joseph faithfully protected Mary, faithfully protected Jesus. Even on her trip, Mary's trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. And of course, when things weren't so clear about what was happening to St. Joseph in his life, when things seemed strange, he trusted in God and he was faithful. Father Don Calloway also interestingly shares that St. Joseph, in a sense, created the first adoration chapel, you might say, in Bethlehem. And again, the second is in Egypt, because wherever Mary and Jesus were, well, wherever Jesus was, it was like an adoration chapel. Even as he adored the Lord Jesus, worked with him on a daily basis, what a beautiful harmony of work and prayer, a great model of faithfulness. We are called to be faithful and to adore Jesus Christ as well. Day 22, mirror of patience, pray for us. Patience is often a difficult virtue, and especially in today's world when we are used to getting, maybe most of the time, whenever we want, uh, when we want it. And we're used to a convenience culture a lot of the time. Yet St. Joseph often had to wait in times of uncertainty, waiting as he decided what to do and prayed about how to respond to Mary's pregnancy, waiting and praying as he pondered what he would do when he would leave to Egypt, when he would return, waiting for the angel to tell him to come back to Nazareth. You know, God allows trials in our patience to help us grow in our patience. It grows by practice. It's not always easy, though, because unpleasant people and unpleasant circumstances in our life, they give us those opportunities to practice the virtue of patience, to be kind, courteous, pleasant, patient and merciful, like the Holy Family was. And we need the Lord's grace to help us to do that. And we ask him for that as well. Father Don Calloway also speaks about St. Joseph's name being placed in the Roman Canon, which is the ancient Eucharistic prayer at the Holy Mass, now also known as Eucharistic Prayer 1. In 1958, when Angelo Roncalli became Pope John XXIII, he would, of course, then later on, in his devotion to St. Joseph, to oversee the Second Vatican Council and to hear uh, Bishop Kuhl speak devoutly and piously on the presentation of St. Joseph. And because of his talk and the way that, that John the Twenty Third was moved by this presentation, he, he placed St. Joseph's name in the Roman Canon, the First Eucharistic Prayer. It took place, took effect in 1962. And later, Pope Benedict XVI also was going to place St. Joseph's name in the other three Eucharistic prayers. Uh, and, and he didn't get a chance to, and so Pope Francis finished that initiative. Day 23, lover of poverty, pray for us. St. Joseph wasn't a pretentious person. He didn't have desires to be in the spotlight. He was humble, hidden, and gracious, but hardworking and devout. The Holy Family was poor. St. Joseph could only afford a poor man's offering when it came to offering Jesus in the presentation in the temple. Father Calloway also gives... Other examples of the poverty of the Holy Family as well in this day. We hear that 
of course, in the Beatitudes of Jesus, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. St. Joseph is an example of being detached from all things, putting God first, relying on God to provide. And St. Joseph was humble and trusted that God would bless his labors, even though he was poor in this world. St. Peter Julian Amart notes that St. Joseph's true wealth, though, was in being with Jesus, being a perfect adorer of Jesus. We, you and I, are rich when we also adore Jesus, even as we imitate St. Joseph in his trust in the Lord's providence and care, and putting God first above the things of this world, being detached from them so we can be freed up to love Christ with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Day 24, model of workmen, pray for us. Father Calloway notes that the devil hates an honest and diligent worker. Lucifer hates, well, hates work, which was good and holy, even before the fall of Adam and Eve. God gave humanity the dignity of work, a form of cooperation with God's own work. St. Joseph is the model of workmen who taught Jesus, in his humanity, how to work. Of course, Jesus being God knew all things, but in his humanity he chose to learn in a human way. Work is sometimes burdensome for us, and yet Jesus invites those who are feeling heavily burdened to come to him. He says to each of us, Come to me, all you who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light and you will find rest for your souls. St. Joseph and Jesus weren't workaholics, though work, of course, did have an important part in their life, and so it does for us. Uh, whatever our situation in life is, we have duties to attend to that God wants to be <clears throat> faithful to. And we're called to balance out this life that we have on earth <clears throat> with our diligent work, our prayer, most of all, and proper rest and proper holy leisure, resting in ways that God, God wants us to rest in. St. Joseph the Worker is a liturgical feast also that reminds us of the dignity of work, and it takes place every May 1st. It historically was put in place uh, to combat the evils and the wrong ideas of communism and incorrect ideas about work. And so in relation to this, Catholics have often invoked St. Joseph the Worker and St. Joseph the Terror of Demons to protect us against uncorrect, wrong ways of seeing work. Day 25, glory of domestic life, pray for us. St. Teresa of Avila would bury medals of St. Joseph around the convents that she founded to ask his protection, and it worked. Similarly, St. Brother Andre Bisset also placed similar medals around the property that he wanted for St. Joseph's oratory in Montreal. Such things bring about St. Joseph's blessing and protection on our properties, but that said, Father Don Calloway warns against what could become superstitious attitudes of, of certain things, especially when it comes to burying statues of St. Joseph, especially upside down, on properties we might want to sell. And so maybe if a person's house, they want to sell it, sometimes people have often said, well, bury a statue of St. Joseph on the property, maybe do it upside down, flip it back up if there's a sale. But Father Don Calloway says this should be very cautioned maybe against because Statues are meant to be above ground and to be venerated. And so he recommends, on the other hand, maybe instead, if you're trying to sell a home or have any domestic concerns, place a statue of St. Joseph prominently in your home. Venerate him. Pray to him. Don't hide him, but let him be seen, and he will work wonders. Just talk to St. Joseph about any of your needs, because he knows them all. He's always listening to you. He knows you. He loves you. You know, he's not going to abandon you. He's your spiritual father. In this day, we also uh, read how St. Jose Maria Escobar gave a great homily on Jesus in St. Joseph's workshop. And so it's a beautiful homily that Father Don, Don Calloway gives us to read. It's beautiful, very worth reflecting on. Day 26, Guardian of Virgins, pray for us. So many people, of course, live a celibate uh, or virginal life, totally given to God. One of those people is St. Therese of Lisieux, who was even called by one of the popes, I forget which one right now, called the greatest saint of modern times. And she always found St. Joseph to be her powerful protector. And St. Faustina also, the Polish nun, of course, receiving many messages throughout her life, especially in the 1930s and so on. She had a great devotion to St. Joseph, who asked her to pray the memorari to St. Joseph every day, to ask his protection and favor, and she found he, he helped her so much. So we want to do something like that too every day. Father Calloway writes, 
Everyone is going to be tempted to sin against purity, some more than others. In St. Joseph, everyone has a guardian and a protector. Turn to him in times of temptation, and you will grow in innocence and purity. Frequently ask his intercession to keep your heart pure and chaste. St. Joseph's fatherly protection is exemplified in a beautiful story about how a convent of sisters, of course, living that, that celibate virginal life, needed a set of stairs built to reach their choir loft. And the situation wasn't easy to build in because of some architectural struggles, shall we say. They prayed a novena to St. Joseph for a solution, and on the last day of the novena, interestingly, a mysterious man came and built a staircase, which is now considered an architectural wonder and a carpenter's masterpiece, says Father Cowley. After searching for the man who had disappeared, they eventually realized it was St. Joseph. And the spruce wood that was used for the staircase is only found in Israel. So it's quite something. And the staircase is still intact today. All this shows how St. Joseph guards and protects everyone. And in a special way, he protects those who choose lives of celibacy in service of the kingdom of God. And so now we go to day 27, pillar of families, pray for us. A Christian image of what the family is supposed to be is so often under attack in our society. We hold up everything a family should be when we hold up the image of the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Father Don Calloway writes on this day, quote, a pillar is a foundation. In order for your home to stand on a firm foundation and be unshakable, your family needs St. Joseph. He will teach your family the importance of prayer, mutual respect, purity, honesty, forgiveness, love, and most importantly, placing God above all things. End quote. Sister Lucia, one of the seers at Fatima, in Portugal, the approved apparitions of Our Lady there, Sister Lucia said that a final battle between God and Satan would be over the family. And satanic redefinitions of marriage are opposed to the Catholic Church's teachings on the holiness, the sacredness of family life, and the importance of each child having a mother, a father, to care for them, to love them. There is something unique that each father and mother gives to their children we want children to be blessed by that in their lives so they can come to know the love of their earthly parents, which point them to the love of their heavenly parents, their heavenly father, their heavenly mother, Mary. Approved apparitions where St. Joseph appeared also include Knock, Ireland, and as we said, Fatima, Portugal. And so St. Joseph is often in these apparitions. He has an important role. God would like us to honor St. Joseph in his fatherhood and to experience his fatherly protection over all our families. Father Don Calloway wisely writes, quote, Our Lady's heart will triumph when the restoration of the family and God's rightful place in it takes place. None of this will happen until St. Joseph's fatherhood is fully recognized by the Church. Now is the time of St. Joseph. End quote. And so, there we are. Those are our days, and we've covered them uh, pretty well, pretty quickly. That's our summary of days 21 to 27. And so we're so uh, happy as we get closer to our consecration to St. Joseph as a parish and individually. Our next and final video in preparation for consecration will be released by the morning of March 19th, just in time for our consecration later that day. So I really hope you've been finding these videos helpful. I know I've enjoyed putting them together so I can share with you all of this great uh, information we're learning together in the consecration of St. Joseph and even more of the graces and fruits that will flow into our lives after. And so, my name is Father Gregory Berkeley, and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you at our next video. Until then, may God bless you abundantly.